Hello Vinyl community! Another sunny day here in Franconia, Germany and uh, the spring is obviously near. There is not a single cloud on the sky so um, it's still pretty cold but uh, uh, it's a rather happy weather. Um, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of uh, great music lately so I feel like sharing. Now. Uh, uh, let's have a look at first um, at the stuff that I received lately um, that is brand new um, and uh, the other records I have kind of put into in a chronological order. So first of all um, there has been this arrival which has been announced for quite a while uh, mixing Colors by Roger Eno and Brian Eno. Um, now this is a, a rather rare collaboration between the brothers Eno. Um, actually the last time they did that uh, was like I don't know, 40 years ago almost uh, on the Apollo Atmospheres and Soundtracks album uh, with uh, Daniel Lanois. Um, yeah, so this was like overdue I guess um, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty nice atmospheric album as you would expect uh, it's the right kind of music to listen to if you're working on a computer um, the cover design is very tasteful quite artistic so this came in a gatefold sleeve uh, here are the Brothers Eno and uh, yeah this was released on Deutsche Grammophon um, which is kind of neat um, I mean Deutsche Grammophon is doing a lot lately uh, in terms of uh, vinyl releases uh, so uh, this is cool um, yeah, as, to, as far as the music goes it is rather piano oriented I would say uh, with a lot of uh, typical Brian Eno treatments. Um, so obviously it's slightly reminiscent of the music that Brian Eno did with uh, Harold Budd. For example, the Plateau of Mirror, uh, the Ambient 2 album, or of course the Pearl. Okay, oh yeah. <laughs> so stylistically speaking there are certain similarities with Harold Budd. But overall this is a quite a wonderful album and uh, certainly a must-have for those that follow the path of Brian Eno. Now uh, the next album it was quite an interesting discovery for me because I didn't know the band and uh, um, this was a pretty uh, cool experience. And um, I'm still listening to this record and uh, it's uh, a lot of fun. Um, the album is called Random Home and the band is called Das Hobos. And um, this is a band from the south of Germany, I think maybe from Munich. This was released on Shamoni Music in Munich and uh, came out probably, I think, end of February. So this is rather brand new. Now, um, this is... Uh, quite a treat because um, the music is pretty much intriguing and quite fascinating. Um, it's not the kind of music that you can easily put into some kind of a genre drawer. Um, probably if I had to make comparisons, if you like the music of for example Slow Dive then you probably can pretty much relate to this album. But personally I like this better simply because uh, it's so beautifully filled with original and uh, whimsical ideas uh, that keep just piling up from track to track and uh, so it never gets dull. That's kind of the interesting thing about it. It starts as this uh, rather dreamy, folky music but after the first two or three minutes the first kind of intriguing surprising element comes in and then the next one and the next one and um, very soon you realize that you have you, that you have entered this uh, very uh, whimsical fascinating world 
where the music actually becomes quite unpredictable. So um, I really enjoyed this. Um, this is a rather short album, probably 30 minutes long, but uh, it's quite amazing how much happens within these 30 minutes. So um, yeah, if you like sort of uh, ambient shoegaze music uh, with all kind of original, playful ideas uh, with the uh, interesting sounds and, uh, and with a rather glitchy use of uh, instruments then this is certainly for you so i can really recommend this record uh, this is a, quite a treat and a rather fascinating journey um, into the work of a band that i have not heard before so yeah this is random home by das hobos and um, check it out now i came across this rather cool funny album which is called um, more early Pakistani dance music um, it's a curated compilation that is uh, focused on uh, seven inches between the years 1965 to 1978 at least that's what the cover says and uh, as the title suggests this is already a second part of a series and um, yeah, this is very cool. Um, as you probably know, I definitely like this kind of music from this cultural environment. And uh, so uh, I might check out the first part as well. This came out on a label called Ovular, which uh, seems to be a German label, but I have not heard of this label before. Um, I think this is also up to this point the only thing they have released. So, uh, interesting uh, touch of nostalgia, an expedition into the Middle Eastern music of the 60s and 70s. Next, I've been listening to Hamilton Bohannon. This is uh, Inside's Out, uh, his album from 1975. Um, this is a master of the old school disco music, uh, certainly a pioneer and uh, someone who's, uh, whose dance beats I've always appreciated. And um, a year after that, uh, this came out, Gitting Off um, by Bohannon. Uh, again, this came out on Dakar and Brunswick. So if you like first generation disco music, um, then you certainly will like this one. To stay in a groovy mood, I was listening to Tropea. A Short Trip to Space. Um, this is an album that came out 1977. Uh, this came out on a label called Marlin, which I don't know much about. Um, this is brilliant, uh, funky music, uh, very accessible and uh, very groovy and uh, with a lot of elements of soul and even a touch of disco. Um, I always keep saying those things, right? <laughs> but it's just a wonderful... Uh, funky record um, that uh, is just fun to listen. I can open the gatefold sleeve here and uh, yeah, so good record. Tropea, short trip to space. And uh, obviously a very cool cover by the way. Next I have another album here by Denise LaSalle called Under the Influence. This came out in 1978 on the ABC label. So uh, Denise LaSalle was quite label hopping at this point. Um, another great uh, soulful disco album by Denise LaSalle, whom I quite appreciate. I mean, not only was she a great or is she a great singer, but uh, she always wrote her music herself and produced it. So this is a quite unusual aspect of a disco front singer's career and makes her certainly a uh, unique artist. Yeah, now the next album is also quite interesting. Um, I bought this not long ago. Uh, this is called uh, Homowa by a band called Basa Basa. Now this is a complete re-release of material that was recorded around 1978 I think. Uh, now uh, the band is from the African country of Ghana but uh, the album was 
actually recorded in Nigeria, in Lagos, um, in the uh, in the Decca studio. So um, the band was a little bit tutored by Fela Kuti, and uh, yeah, I mean this is a bit of a cult album from Ghana from the late 70s. Uh, a great example of Afrobeat. Um, originally, it came out uh, under the title "Together We Win." Um, also, the band was uh, the band's name was slightly different. It was, I think, Bassa Bassa Experience. Or uh, I think at some point the name was High Life Music. I think so. Um, there's a whole history uh, that comes with these uh, extensive liner notes. Um, the label this was released is called Vintage Voodoo and I think this is a rather new label uh, in the Netherlands. I don't think they have made so many records up until now. I think it's rather a uh, record shop, a vinyl store and uh, they're kind of slowly moving into label work as often happens. Uh, that's how some great labels uh, came to existence. So this is cool music from Ghana. Uh, it has this uh, sort of late 70s uh, Afrobeat uh, vibe to it and uh, certainly great fun to listen. And uh, another beautiful pin on the map of my sort of uh, geographical expeditions uh, into the world of interesting music. Now with the next two albums we move into the year 1981 and I have been listening to this uh, after quite a long time but uh, there is a unfortunate reason for that because uh, Gabi Delgado has died only a few days ago. Um, the vocalist and uh, one of the two guys of uh, Deutsch Amerikanische Freundschaft um, Duff uh, released this album in 1981. Uh, it's called uh, Alles ist gut. And um, yeah, this was uh, produced and engineered by Connie Plank in his legendary studio. And uh, it's certainly a very influential album, I would say. Particularly if you grew up, like I did, if you grew up in the south of Germany, in Bavaria. And... Uh, as a teenager, if you went into all kind of uh, shady underground clubs in these small villages and small cities, um, then uh, Gabi Delgado's voice was always present there. Uh, this was certainly an album that has been played a lot by DJs back in the day. And I think Duff is certainly one of the most important and influential bands of the 80s in Germany. Um, this is uh, Gold und Liebe. They released this album same year, still 1981, again with Connie Plank. Um, so they were really very prolific uh, in 1981. Another wonderful record, uh, including uh, tracks like Verschwende deine Jugend. So those also are kind of uh, underground anthems back in the day. Yeah, it's sad that Gabi Delgado has died because he wasn't that old. Um, but uh, here it is. Some things simply move into the past and remain there, frozen in time. Um, interestingly, talking about um, Connie Plank. I finally got this album, which is uh, En Route by Möbius and Planck. Uh, this is material that they recorded, I think, around 1986, I believe, 85 or 86, and it was not released at that point. Only a year after that, Connie Planck unfortunately died of illness, and, uh, and this has been released eventually on a CD in the 90s. Um, I think 1995 maybe. Um, now this is a reissue by Bureau B. This this came out in 2012. And um, again, this is uh, excellent music. I'm a big Möbius and Planck fan and I didn't have this album. And um, yeah, this is quite cool. 
Interestingly, if you listen to it, uh, I mean, the choice of sounds, the choice of synthesizers is quite reminiscent of Duff of Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft, which uh, Connie Plank had uh, produced probably four years before that. So I find it interesting because while the production of the Duff records was the situation where these two young kids uh, basically travel into the to the studio to the north of Germany to work in this studio with this seasoned uh, experienced uh, producer um, it seems like they have influenced him a little bit because uh, when uh, Plunk did this album here with Dita Möbius uh, it feels like there is a lot of inspiration drawn from Duff and from uh, the way they used synthesizers and there's a certain level of harshness in the choice of sounds so this is pretty interesting how uh, uh, the collaboration between Duff and Plank how it probably was not just a uh, one one way road but was kind of going both ways in terms of inspiration so this is a pretty cool record and I'm happy to have it um, again it comes with the Liner notes by Asmus Tietjens, uh, always uh, in English and in German. So this is kind of cool, where he writes about this particular album and uh, this uh, chapter of uh, Connie Plank's history. So that's en route, uh, Möbius and Plank. Yeah, and the last album I want to show you. Um, is uh, another uh, Connie Plank production and that's uh, in the garden by the Eurythmics. Uh, this is a pretty cool record. I always enjoy this. I don't listen to it that often. Only every once a year maybe. And um, it's uh, quite a fascinating, probably highly influential album. I mean, if you listen to it now, this is from 1981. Um, and Connie Plank did some really amazing stuff in 1981, didn't he? So if you listen to it now, you kind of feel how strongly this must have been influential on the later music of alternative rock and probably even Britpop and uh, you kind of feel it. Um, particularly with tracks like Belinda which is not my favorite track on the album, but uh, you kind of feel the, the influential nature of this of the song. So uh, yeah, this was a pretty cool debut album by this famous duo of artists. And uh, whenever I listen to it from time to time, I always enjoy it. So uh, this is In the Garden, Eurythmics, and this, this was my stack for now. And I hope there was something interesting or inspiring for you. And uh, have a nice day, stay safe, stay healthy, stay inside, and uh, see you next time.